Hey everyone, this is Michael from Up and Running Tutorials, and in this video, we'll learn about GraphQL and practice using it with Gatsby to query our content. So, we've created a new Gatsby project using the default starter, and we've opened it in VS Code and started Gatsby's development server so that we can see our project in the browser. If you're not sure how to get to this point, check out the link in the description below to an earlier video that walks you through how to start a new Gatsby project. Assuming you've done that, let's talk about how to use GraphQL with Gatsby. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language, which basically means it's a way to ask for your data. To understand this, let's look at the GraphQL homepage, which does a great job of breaking down how this process works. So we're at graphql.org, and here at the top of the site, they break down the three basic steps for how GraphQL operates. First, you tell GraphQL what data you have. Then when you want some of your data, you write a query that specifies what fields you want. In this case, we want the tagline. And then you get back an object that contains those fields with their actual data. A great thing about Gatsby is that you don't actually have to complete this first step at all. Once you've pointed Gatsby towards your data, each time you start your development server or build your site, Gatsby will read through your data and create these descriptions known as your schema so that you don't have to and actually all you ever have to do is learn how to write these queries and how to use the data that you get back. If we look at the Gatsby JS homepage, we can now understand a little better this document that we looked at in the first video of this series. Let's follow the link to the plugins page and let's search for some common data sources. So for example, if your content is stored in WordPress, you can search WordPress and you will see here Gatsby source WordPress. And if you go to that plugin, you'll see that it's a plugin for pulling in your data from WordPress using the WordPress REST API. If we go back, you'll find just about any CMS you've heard of here already. If we want to pull in data from Sanity, we'll find Gatsby Source Sanity. If we want to try Netlify CMS, there it is. You can even source your data from spreadsheets like Airtable. There's Gatsby Source Airtable. Or Google Sheets, I think, even has a source plugin. There we go. So there really are many, many plugins that let you connect automatically to all sorts of data sources. And if you don't find a plugin for the data source you need, Gatsby's documentation includes instructions for how you can write one yourself. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna practice querying some example data. And to keep things simple, we're gonna place that data on our local file system and just use a JSON file with some data that we've entered manually. So I'm going to go into the source folder here and I'm going to create a new folder and call it data. And inside this folder, I'm going to create a new file and call it projects.json. And then so you don't have to watch me do this, I've pre-written just some very basic example data. You can see this is an array that contains three objects that are all the same in their shape. Each object is example data for a portfolio. So this gives us some data to work with and to query. At the moment, we're not able to query any of the information in this file because we have not told Gatsby that we are using this data folder as a data source. So to query a file on our local file system, we need to install a plugin that's called Gatsby Source File System and then point that plugin to our data folder so it knows that this is the part of the file system that it should be looking at. Luckily for us, the default starter already includes this plugin. If we open the package JSON, we can see that Gatsby source file system has already been installed. And then if we open the Gatsby config file, we can see right here that Gatsby source file system has already been configured. Currently, this plugin is configured to only look inside the images folder. So at the moment, because our data folder is outside of the scope of the image folder, Gatsby isn't currently looking in it for any data. Let's take a look at the instructions for this plugin to see how we can fix that. To find the instructions, we go back to the plugins page and we'll search for file system. And here's Gatsby source file system. 
If we go to that page, this confirms this is a source plugin that lets you source data from your local file system. Okay, great. We need to install it. That's already been done. And then to use it, we just need to add another configuration for each folder that we want to point this plugin to. Another option would be to just change the first configuration to point to just the source folder so that any folder inside of the source folder will be included. But in this case, I'll follow the example shown here. And I'm actually just going to copy this directly and paste it into our Gatsby config file. Now, in addition to sourcing from the images folder, this plugin will be looking at the data folder as well and will include any information it finds there in the data that we can query with GraphQL. We're nearly there, but before we can query our JSON file, we're going to need to add one more plugin that will transform our JSON data into a format that GraphQL can actually read. So while source plugins help you connect to a data source, there are also transformer plugins that help you transform non-JavaScript file formats like JSON or YAML or Markdown into a GraphQL-friendly format. So if we go back to the plugins directory here and we search for JSON, we'll find Gatsby Transformer JSON. Installing this plugin will allow Gatsby to read our JSON data so that we can query it with GraphQL. As we can see, this plugin will transform our JSON string data into JavaScript objects. This is the last step that we need to perform to allow us to use JSON files as a data source. So I'm going to copy this installation command, and then I'll head to Hyper, where our site is running. I'm going to stop our development server and paste in this command and hit Enter to run it. And then while that's running, I'm going to go back to the instructions. And to use this, the configuration is simple. We just need to add this one line to our plugins array inside of Gatsby config. So I'm going to head over here, and you can add this anywhere inside the array. I'll add it right here. Make sure when you add it, you have a comma if there are other items after it so you don't break this array. I'm going to give that a save. I'll head back to Hyper and we've finished installing Gatsby Transformer JSON. And so now because we've changed our Gatsby configuration in Gatsby config and because we've added new data to our project, we needed to restart our development server anyway. So I will type in Gatsby develop and we'll get that restarted. Okay, our development server is back up and running. And just a quick note, at this point, you've installed everything you need to install to connect to this data folder as a data source. But if you were to ever change what fields you're querying here, if you were to add another field to each of these objects, for example, or if you were to change the name of any of the existing fields, in order for Gatsby to update its map of what data exists in your project, you would need to stop your development server and restart it. You don't have to do this when you change the values of the existing fields. You just need to do this when you change anything about the fields themselves. So at this point, we are finally ready to query our data. To help us write our queries and to test them and make sure they work, Gatsby includes a handy tool called Graphical. To use this tool, you just need to open your browser to the correct URL, which you can find in the console after you have started up your site. Gatsby provides you with the link to see your site here. And this other link that you've been seeing each time you start is the link to Graphical. This is a tool for writing GraphQL queries and seeing what the results will be when you run them. So I already have Graphical open in our browser. You can go to that now and I'll widen this a bit so we can see better. This is graphical. It has two parts. There's a left-hand side where you write your queries. And on the right-hand side, you'll see the result of the query if it's successful, or you'll see an error explaining why it was not successful. When you start up graphical, you'll see these comments. To write a comment inside of a GraphQL query, you use this hash at the beginning of the line. You can do that in your own code as well. For now, I'll just delete all of these comments just to make this a bit cleaner. And let's practice querying our JSON data. So to start a query, you just open a set of curly braces. So we just type this, and that is how a query begins. You can start with the keyword query, if you like, but you don't have to. And you can also add a descriptive name to this query, like we could call it projects query if we wanted. Both of those things are totally optional. 
it works just as well with just a plain set of curly braces. So that's what I'll do for now. And then we're just going to begin drilling down into our data. And at each level, to see what fields you can possibly query, you can just type either control space, or if you've used that shortcut for something else on your computer like I have, you can also type shift space. Typing that combination, shift space at the same time, will pop up this list of all the possible fields that you could query at this level of your query. We can see a number of options here and just walk through them. You'll notice immediately that some fields begin with all and some do not. The difference is that the fields that begin with all will query an array where there are multiple items. The fields that don't begin with all will query an object that contains just a single item. Since our example data is an array of multiple projects, we'll be looking for a field that starts with all. And what we're expecting to see is a field that matches our file name. If we head down towards the bottom, we see all projects JSON, and this is the field that we want. So to drill down one more level, we open up another set of curly braces, and then we'll hit shift space again to see our options. At this point, we don't see any fields that match our data. Instead, we're seeing these edges and nodes fields. When you query an array of data, the first level of your query will refer to the array as a whole, all of its items. So at this level, you have two options. One is to choose edges, open up another set of curly braces, and then choose node. Node represents a single item in your array. And if we now hit shift space to look at what we could query, we'll see the actual fields that we have listed in each of the items in our array, name, description, and link. So edges and node are two levels that you'll need to drill down through in order to get to the data contained in each item of your array. You have another option, which is instead of choosing edges at this level, we can look at the options again, and you can choose nodes. This will also work if you open up a set of curly braces and take a look at your options. You're now inside the values of an individual item in this array. So it lets you skip one of the levels in your query. You can use either option, and in this case, we'll just use nodes since it's a little simpler and will work for us. So we'll tell it that inside each node, we would like to query the name field, the description field, and then we'd like to query the link field. For this one, we need to drill down one more level and we'll query the href field and the text field as well. So let's see if this worked. We hit this play button to run the query. And on the right side, we can see our result. We're getting back an object with a data key. Inside of data, we have another object, and then we start drilling down through similar layers as what we used in our query. We get all projects JSON, which drills down into nodes, and then inside of that, we have an array, and each object in the array contains keys that match our query with the actual value of that key next to it. And that is how you write a GraphQL query with Gatsby. The extra layers which you have to drill down through for an array don't exist if you're not querying an array. So you would be able to skip this level and you wouldn't have the word all at the beginning of your query either. We've also practiced querying every single bit of data. We've queried all the fields that are included here, but we don't have to. This is one of the nice things about GraphQL. You don't always have to receive all the data from a source. You can just query a single field if that's what you want. We could remove all of this and say we just want the name of each of our projects. And then that's what we would get back, just the name field. You can also rename fields as you query them. So for example, if we want our result to use the word title instead of the word name, we would just type the alias here with a colon before the field we're querying. When we run that, now we can see that that data is associated with the key title instead of name. So you can do this anytime you like. It's most useful when the field you're querying is a bit long and confusing and it wasn't named by you and you'd rather just have something shorter and simpler. So you're in control of the naming of each field when you query it. Sometimes your query won't work. This time everything worked just fine. Some common reasons why it might not work are typos. So for example, if I misspelled name, then we'll see instead of our data, we'll see errors. So this says we cannot query the field NME. Did you mean name? So this one's pretty helpful. It tells you exactly what's going on and how to fix it. Another problem 
might be that you've forgotten to install your source plugin or you haven't correctly configured it in Gatsby config. So for that, you'd want to just double check the instructions and confirm that you've followed them correctly. Another thing that can happen is that if your field is pointing to a file on your file system, if there's anything wrong with that path or the name of the file, if the typo exists here, basically, then that could also create some errors when you try to query those fields. So you'll just wanna double check that. And then the other most common reason your query might have trouble would be if I added an extra field here, for example, if I said I'm gonna also have an author field, and let's say I add that to every item, and I give that a save, and I decide I'm ready to query that, so I type author, this is not gonna work, and it'll just tell you we can't query the field author from projects.json. The trouble here is simply that because you've changed what fields exist in your data, you just need to restart your Gatsby development server because it's when Gatsby first starts up your server or when it builds your site that it maps out all of your data and what fields exist. Because the author field didn't exist when we started our server, it's not available to query, but we can fix that by just restarting the server. If you see any other errors, then just copy and paste them into Google and add the keyword Gatsby as well to your search. And that will usually lead you to an issue in the Gatsby GitHub repo that will walk you through what to do. The vast majority of errors you'll ever find are just due to simple typos in either the name of the field or the path to an asset. So this workflow of coming first to this graphical tool and testing our query and making sure that it works without any errors is a really good practice to follow as you start adding content to your Gatsby site using GraphQL. You don't have to ever use this tool. It's just here for your benefit. It makes it easier to see exactly what's going on with your query and drill down through the results. You could skip this and just put the query straight into your code. And if you get lucky, that will work just fine. But if anything goes wrong with your query, it's going to be harder to figure out what's going on outside of this tool. So I recommend you always write your queries with this tool, and then you can just copy and paste the working version of the query into your code without having to deal with any errors at that point. So we now know how to connect our Gatsby project to an external data source and how to write GraphQL queries that pull in our data. In the next video, we'll learn how to transfer this query into our code so we can pass this data to our components and render it on screen. Until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.